Hello everybody, this is Eric Glenn on RPG, and today I'll be ranking the entire JRPG library on the PlayStation 2. We've got over 100 games to cover, all of these babies right here. Man, this is gonna be a long video, very good video, very cool, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's gonna get crazy, perhaps the craziest video I've ever done in my life. So I'm gonna rank over 100 games here, and that starts right now. Alright, let's begin with Art Tonelico 1 and 2. Amazing game, science fiction RPGs, very lewd, some visual novel elements here and there. I've covered these games before several times in my channel, and they're good. Honestly, between you and me, I can't decide which one is the best. I'm always debating between one and the other. I guess when it comes to story, the second one convinced me a little bit more. Like, I really enjoy the relationship between the two girls, the two main heroines, and how hatred evolve into love in, in the good sense of the word and overall they have almost the exact same battle system the exact same graphics the exact same lore one is a direct sequel to the other but with different characters and different setting and all that jazz but you kind of do need to play the first one to understand the other one so these are great games i ranked them before in the a tier but that was because that was the art of Nilico spotlight in its own video but today compared to all the other amazing games you're about to see i'm gonna give them a b Next up is Ark of the Lab 4, also known as Ark of the Lab Twilight of the Spirits. This was like a reboot of the series, this was a new approach to the genre, strategy RPG. It's about your characters moving in limited areas with ranges and all that jazz. It's a very, very good story, dividing among two races, how they hate each other, and how in the end they need to cooperate with each other and understand each other to achieve their goals. So it's a very good story, very, very well written, criminally underrated this game, cheap, dirt cheap nowadays, this game you can find for like $5, and those are going, probably going to be the best $5 you'll ever spend. This game is an A tier for me. And the last arc, the lab, End of Darkness, End of Darkness, literally speaking, because this game killed the franchise, and... It's such a shame because it is such a bad game. It's not absolutely terrible, it's not garbage, but it is one of the worst RPGs on the PlayStation 2. It was totally different, felt as if it was developed by different people. Action RPG, quest-driven, lame-ass main character. Some of the characters from the previous games make cameo appearances here, and some, some of them are actually party members. You can switch between them, you cannot have you know regular allies following you around. So it's, it's just poorly designed, the act, the controls are bad, the, the action is mediocre, it just doesn't get you immersed, and it, there's no reason to invest your time in this game. Are the Lab End of Darkness? Wow, I'm very tempted to give it an E, but just because it's not absolutely terrible, I'm gonna give it a D. Next up is the Atelier Iris Trilogy. These are the very first three Atelier games we ever got, the first trilogy in North America. And they're great games, they're all great. The first one was, it led the basis for the trilogy, so it doesn't really stand out a lot in certain areas. It's still a great game, it's a nice story. I guess you could call this game like the beginning of a trending, because it evolved from there, and then it kind of devolved from there, and then another game saved the franchise, and you know, this is a big ass franchise. And Iris was a great start, Honestly, I recommend the first one a lot, so I'm gonna give it a B, it's a great game, but I do prefer a little bit more the second one, The Ass Off of Destiny. That's a great game, fantastic, better story, better characters, better development, uh, the battle system for some reason felt like better, in the first one felt so basic, and in here they added some small features that help improve the battle mechanics, uh, the graphics are still great, the music, it's such a memorable game, and you keep jumping between these two protagonists. Some missions will be carried out by Felt, the main character, and then you're gonna switch to Vise, the other main character, which will be... Vise's part in the story is more like the uh, modern Atelier games, like she'll do all the Atelier, or all the synthesizing, all the gathering, all the uh, creating items, and sending them to Felt to the other dimension, because he goes... To this parallel world for so to say that's all i'll say don't worry no spoilers and it's such an amazing game an amazing cast of characters i'm gonna give this game an a now the third one it's also a great game but it was mostly quest driven you felt like it was a watered down version of both games because the entire game takes place in this big town and you easily get lost in there it's not a great town the town doesn't have a great design 
and the story is just, it's good, the story is just as good as the other two, uh, As of, of Destiny is better, but this game, it was very quest driven, you get lost, you don't know what to do sometimes, and it gets very repetitive, it's just not as good as the other two, let's just leave it at that, I'm gonna give this game a C. Baroque is also available on the Wii, and it's almost a terrible game, like it was a great idea, very dark, dark as hell, you take control of this guy who out of nowhere appears in this purgatory looking kind of place, I'm not gonna give away any spoilers, then an angel appears before him and tells him that he's gotta do these uh, roguelike games, these roguelike mechanics, like going to this dungeon, these uh, randomly generated dungeons over and over again, and the, the idea was great, it felt as if you were playing sometimes a survival horror game, so it was a great combination, but poorly, poorly executed. The controls are total garbage, the camera ruins the experience, it's so dark, in all sense of the word, you, you barely see anything sometimes in certain areas, and it's so repetitive and so hard, so brutally and unfairly hard, it turns you off immediately. Baroque, it's not an absolute terrible garbage, so it's, it's a mediocre game, I'm gonna give it a D. Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter was an experiment gone wrong, it's the Breath of Fire game that killed the series, well that was Breath of Fire 6, the mobile garbage, but when it comes to console traditional role-playing games, this one, this is the one that buried the franchise, and it's not a bad game, I don't think it's a bad game, it's just very, very complicated and hard to get into, it, it's a little bit of a roguelike as well, but it has some extreme horrible, horrible penalties, that can ruin your entire experience, like sometimes you need to die, literally die in this game and restart the game from the beginning to make actual progress and they give you penalties to for for using the dragon form like what's the point? if, I'm, if I use the dragon form for a few turns, it's game over and I gotta restart the whole game? it's not a terrible game um, for some people it's actually a good game the story is amazing here, I'll give you that but it's just not for me. I'm gonna give it a D. Chaos Wars is an amazing strategy RPG. It's a crossover between several Idea Factory games. There's characters from other franchises and other companies like the Shadow Hearts characters, the guy from Gongrave, some characters from Girl Lancer 5, Heritage of War, which I absolutely loved, some characters from the first Girl Lancer we never got, Overall, it's an amazing game, funny as hell, you'll be jiggling so hard, laughing so hard, specifically because it has the absolute worst voice acting in English in a video game. This tops Resident Evil on the PlayStation, trust me, it's so bad, it's good, it's laughable. <laughs> but sometimes it's unbearable, fortunately you can switch to the Japanese voice acting, which is, which is much better. Uh, it's a very fun game, guys, I'm gonna give it a B. Colosseum Road to Freedom doesn't look like a Japanese role-playing game at all, and this is before Dark Souls and all those, those games, so this is a western looking type of Japanese role-playing game, action RPG as a matter of fact, and you take control of a gladiator in a Colosseum and you gotta train, often train for the next battle and so on, until little by little the story starts unfolding, it's quest driven, but it starts unfolding and you eventually start training for to get your freedom back and it's a fun game but eventually it turns repetitive and the controls the action uh, it, it's a little, a little bit clunky I'm gonna have to admit but it's still a fun game because you do all these uh, training missions training sessions and it's just dumb <laughs> but cool in a good sense of the word although it does get repetitive over time and you get to a point where you're like again again the same the same the same uh, they could have done a better job and they could have done a better story in my opinion Ah, it's a fun game, still a good game, so I'm gonna give it a C. Now, Crimson Tears is a game that a lot of people might say it's not actually an RPG, but I see strong, really strong RPG elements in there. It's also a little bit of a roguelike. Every time you enter a dungeon, uh, it's different, it's a different layout, you gotta walk different paths, different areas, but the maps aren't all that different, so it's not hard to get lost, it's just find the key to the next area, move on, and so on until you eventually reach the boss. It's a fairly easy game, but the bosses can be freaking brutal, and you control these three androids, three characters, and you cannot switch between them at any time, no. You choose one character and you stop with that character unless that character dies, 
and then you're taken back to the select screen to play as another character in the same dungeon until you reach the boss and eventually beat it. And there's a little, not exactly a town, just a street full of vendors, people selling items, you know, asking you for quests, and then there's a quest of restoring the town and all that jazz, so you see, it's an action RPG in my opinion. It's a Capcom game, it has good graphics, great controls, great action, uh, story's interesting, it's all about the fan service, but it is interesting, it gets interesting, so it's a great game, uh, it's a hidden gem, I'm gonna give this game a B. Dark Cloud was the beginning of a trending series that back then nobody gave a damn about, and nowadays it's a cult classic and a lot of people loved it mysteriously. Dark Cloud is another action RPG and you get to restore towns, you also get 5 characters, and little by little you start rescuing people, uh, rescuing towns, restoring the towns themselves, and during the dungeons it's, it acts a little bit like a dungeon crawler, so the dungeons can be pretty long, pretty repetitive and boring sometimes, and the controls can be clunky as hell sometimes as well. Dark Cloud may be an all-time classic and beloved people by a lot of you, but I played this game almost when it came out, and several years later I gave it another shot, and it didn't impress me, but I thought it was a really unique idea and very original. I'm gonna give this game a C. Moving on to the sequel, Dark Cloud 2, which in my opinion is a much better game. Still, it's a dungeon crawler, and the dungeons can be pretty long, but the controls are better, uh, the difficulty is better. I mean, in the first Dark Cloud, there were there were these difficulty spikes, horrible difficulty spikes, and it, here is a more balanced game. And there's also um, several new gameplay mechanics. Instead of rest restoring town, there's a lot of sense of exploration because you do, you, need, you do a lot of things here, like alchemy even, like sometimes repairing things, taking photos of people, and so on. So it's a very fun game. Overall, it's much better than the first Dark Cloud, and the story is more interesting. The characters have more personality. I'm gonna give this game a B. Next up is Dawn of Mana. Dawn of Mana. It was such a big disappointment, unfortunately. It isn't the first Mana game I played. Uh, that was the first uh, Legend of Mana. Then I play, played Secret of Mana. And then when I when I got to this game, I was like, it looked really cool. It looks beautiful, as a matter of fact. And the music is just fantastic, but it loses momentum. Like, I don't know what happened there, that the music isn't that as impressive as in The Legend of Mana, for example, and the controls are terrible, as is the camera. This game, it's very convoluted, most of the time you don't know where to go or what, what you're supposed to do, so it's not, a, not only cryptic, it's kind of bad, it's mediocre, no one cares about it for one very good reason, I don't recommend this game. It's not absolute garbage, but I, I'm still gonna give it a D. Now moving on to the Digimon games, you guys know me, I don't care about these games, I did play them both and I just wasn't impressed, I didn't like them, eventually I got bored, you know, it's, it's just gathering, you know, training monsters and fighting along, you know, with them, having them fight and it, it's just not for me, not my type of game. But I think they're pretty decent, the battle system in uh, Digimon World Data Squad was fairly decent, it was fairly interesting, I mean, I have never seen something like this, like you're seeing it right now, I can't even explain this battle system because I didn't really understand it, but in the end, it's a turn-based RPG, and it's a very unique battle system. Ah, I'm gonna give it a C. Same as Digimon World 4, which is an action RPG, and it's actually pretty decent, I did have some fun with this game, but very quickly I got to a point where I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm not enjoying this. So these games, if you're a fan of Digimon, these could be S tiers or A tiers for you. This is my list, not a fan of Digimon, so another C. This Gaia 1 and 2, the first This Gaia game is a freaking grindfest, brutally hard game, no need to talk about it, I'm gonna give it a B. And the other one is better, This Gaia 2, I had a lot of fun, I finished this game, the only This Gaia game I've ever finished. Uh, to me, it's better than the first one, so I'm gonna give it an A. Duck Upon Kingdom is, believe it or not, a party turn-based RPG. Like Mario Party meets role-playing games, meets anime, and cute anime and all that jazz, and it's very fun. If you play this game by yourself, it's also on the Wii by the way, you play this game by yourself and honestly it's not that fun because the AI, uh, your enemies, the guys you're fighting against in the boards, can be very unfair, it's very intelligent, and they're beating the crap out of you constantly. But if you play this game with a friend or with uh, four friends, three more friends, it's very fun, it's a very fun game. 
unfortunately it's uh, somewhat expensive and I don't think it's worth the price because it's a game you're, you're likely to play once or twice maybe because it's honestly not that fun by yourself. Unless you're playing this with somebody else, it's not that great, so I'm gonna give it a C. Dragon Quest VIII, one of the best Dragon Quest ever made. I love that you loved it, A tier for me, let's move on. Dragon Guard 1 and 2 are games that are somewhat different. They play the same uh, hack and slash missions, uh, Musou style type of gameplay. And then there's the aerial missions with the dragons, and let's just compare about that. First of all, in terms of story, the first one is much better, much better, no doubt about it. But in terms of gameplay, the second one beats the crap out of the first one in every sense of the word. First one had clunky controls, uh, questionable battle system, questionable difficulty spikes. The second one also has a lot of difficulty spikes, but it's harder the more you advance, and I like that. You know, because it gives you the chance to train with your characters and to move on and you play as different characters, you can switch them at any given time. So overall, Dragon Guard 1 has the better story, but Dragon Guard 2 has the better everything else. So the first Dragon Guard, to me, it's a C. And the second one, I'm gonna give it a B. Dual Hearts is another action RPG. It's like the successor to the Alondra games on the PlayStation. This is, in a way, Alondra 3 because it was developed by the same company and it's in the same vein action, platformers, and, and there's a lot of puzzles involved you gotta solve these puzzles, but the puzzles here are less harder less hard than the previous games, specifically the first one so it's a friendly game, it's a friendly approach and it has a lot of personality, it's fun to play and it's very interesting because you get to enter the, uh, people's dreams in a different sense, I mean the first one was very dark which is actually a better game in my opinion but in here, it's it's more colorful, I guess it's more oriented to kids. And well, I gotta admit guys, this game, it's good in every sense of the word, it just doesn't stand out that much for me. It's a very fun game, I do recommend it, and overall, out of all the C tiers so far, this might be just the best, but I can't give it a B. So for now, I'll settle for a C. Believe it or not, there's two Dynasty Tactics game on the PlayStation 2, two of them. And, you know, the Dynasty Warriors games should be Warriors games. These tactics games are just kind of there. They're okay. They're not bad. I mean, they're not bad at all, both of them. I think the second one is a little bit better, but overall these games are just... Like, nobody wanted them. Like, why did they make them? They're just kind of there. Oh, strategy RPGs based on the Dynasty series. Ah, they're both a D. Next up is <laughs> Ephemeral Fantasia, also pronounced as Ephemeral Fantasia, because that's a Spanish word. Ephemeral Fan <sighs> it's such a bad game, man. It had a lot of potential. I don't even understand what this game is about. It's like this kind of musician that you know starts on a ship and then when, once he gets ho uh, to the big ass town, horrible design. Uh, he meets a princess and he falls in love and then there's a commander who greets him because they hired this guy for I don't even remember what and the commander of the guards, she's overly sexualized, she might be the only good thing about the game <laughs> because the battle system here is absolutely terrible, I mean you're seeing this right now, it's awful, look at that camera man, why does it need to keep moving around and do you even understand what's going on, the menus are all convoluted as hell Sometimes you can't even see when your characters are attacking or receiving damage or... It's just bad. It's poorly, poorly designed. And the town is no different. It's absolute trash as well. The camera, awful camera, and you get lost in the areas, in the dungeons, in town. It's absolutely terrible. This game might just be the worst RPG on the PlayStation 2. I'm gonna give it an E. Eternal Ring. Eternal Ring was an action RPG in the first person from a company called From Software. That's right, before Dark Souls, they made this extremely mediocre game. It's not bad, it's just not for me. And even if it was for me, I will still rank it on the D because there's just nothing, nothing about it. I mean, it's very boring, very repetitive, very boring. 
There's nothing fun about this game, in my opinion. It might be a good game to you, like a hidden gem for some of you. I respect that, but this is my list, my ranking, and Eternal Ring, it did, just didn't do it for me. And it, it's a launch title, by the way, on the PlayStation 2. Uh, I'm gonna give it a D. Eternal Poison, one of my absolute favorite strategy RPGs of all time. Love this game to death. Extremely recommended in this channel, probably one of the most popular games in this channel. This game practically got famous thanks to me, and that's cool. I hope more YouTubers start recommending this game because it's such an amazing experience, man. Strategy RPG, uh, four characters, three characters to choose from, then you beat one of them or three of them, I don't remember, and you unlock the fourth protagonist. And there's a fifth protagonist, but you gotta capture all the monsters and including the bosses. So you gotta to unlock this guy. It's sort of like a side quest. You don't need to unlock that guy to reach the true ending of the game. Such an amazing game, extremely well written story, very gothic, very unique, very charismatic, cynical, and dark. There should be more games like this. Please. Oh, Flight Plan, the company who developed this game, is no more. Ah. Anyway, Eternal Poison, an A tier for me. Evergrace is another launch title, another game by From Software, another extremely mediocre adventure. Action RPG, you get to choose between two characters and the controls are bad. Camera is not that bad, but you know, since the controls are bad, it's bad nonetheless. The story is not interesting at all, there's barely any story whatsoever. So this predates Dark Souls, if you play this game you're gonna feel a little bit of, you know, what came after this game when it, become, when it became Demon Souls and no, nothing to do with those games, don't worry, story-wise they're not connected at all, Evergrace is its own game and it, it's overall a bad game in my opinion, it's not absolutely terrible, but it's another D. Final Fantasy X, you love it, I didn't love it, but it's a great game nonetheless, I'm gonna give it a B. Final Fantasy X 2! Uh, it's a D. Final Fantasy XII, a great game. I did enjoy this game. I did love it. I did beat it. So many hours put into it. One of the longest RPGs I ever played. I know the Zodiac Age, uh, the remaster, is currently the best version to play of this game, but you honestly, you can't go wrong with this one, so I'm gonna give it an A. In case you didn't know, there's three full Metal Alchemist games on the PlayStation 2 action RPGs. We only got the first two because, well, they kind of failed in sales. First of all, because the first game is not that great. Clunky controls, clunky camera, uh, cryptic gameplay, but overall it's still a decent game, it's still playable, rescuable, so it's a fun game. It's based on the anime, of course, some things are changed to extend the story to three games, as a matter of fact, but it's still, it follows the anime, it follows the manga as well, so it's legit. It's a C. And the second one is a much better game. This is the one that I actually beat because I really like it. The controls are better, the camera is better. It's just, it took everything wrong with the first game and improved it, corrected it. So it's a much better game in my opinion. This game, I'm gonna give it a B. And we never got the third game. So let's move on to Forever Kingdom. Forever Kingdom is actually known as Evergrace 2. It is the sequel to Evergrace. And just like with Full Metal Alchemist, it took everything wrong with Evergrace and did it right. It's a good game, as a matter of fact. And you got three characters, you can't switch between them, no, you know, well, you can't switch between them, but uh, they, you have allies, they follow you around and you fight alongside of them, so, which is pretty cool. And the controls are better, the camera is better, the story is better. Overall, it's a much better game, in my opinion. I never finished it because I only borrowed this game, I don't own this game and I can't download it for some reason. And make it work. So Forever Kingdom, mm. I'll put this as a C because honestly, it's a good game. It's just not as good as Artonelico One and Two, Chaos Wars, Crimson Tears. So I'm gonna give it a C for now. Now we got Front Mission Four. There's a Front Mission game on the PlayStation Two, in case you didn't know, and it's honestly not that good. The story's still great. It's fantastic from two points of view, two main characters there. But, I don't know, Front Mission 3 on the PlayStation was a great game, and this one felt like a watered-down version of it. It's still, it's still a fun game, it's still good, but it's just not Front Mission 3, let's leave it at that. <laughs> it's a C. Graffiti Kingdom is a fun action RPG directed at kids, specifically made for kids, 
and it was a good idea because it's a fun game, there's a lot of things to do, it's not open world, but you know, you, you need to like explore the town, the areas around, uh, it's a fun game, I didn't get very far because honestly, I didn't think it was that great, I am not, I wasn't the target audience for this game, so I felt it was a little bit lazy on that area, but I think a kid might enjoy it, uh, it's still an okay game, I guess, but I didn't give a damn about it, I'll be honest. So I'm gonna give it a D. Grandia 2, amazing game. I know it's not the better version to play, but it's still, if you can't have any other version whatsoever, settle down with the PlayStation 2 version, it's still a great game, I'm gonna give it an A. Grandia Extreme is a hardcore version of all the Grandia games. Dungeon crawler, quest driven, good story, good characters, good everything. I think it's a good game. It's just not as good as Grandia 2 or even Grandia 3 or even the first Grandia. It's the worst Grandia out there, but it's still a fun game. I recommend this game for hardcore players only. So I'm gonna give this game a C. Grandia 3, I know it feels a little bit like a Disney game, but I don't know why I feel this game was so dark in some part, specifically in some monster designs and some dungeons. It's very colorful, graphics are fantastic, the battle system is the epitome of the Grandia series, it has the best battle system in the entire series, and the cast of characters, the main characters and the story itself wasn't that great, it's just a lot of people compare this game to Grandia 2, that's their biggest mistake. If you play this game with an open mind, with your eyes open, without comparing it to Grandia 2, I think it's an extremely very well done game, so I'm gonna give it an A as well. Moving on to Grow Lancer 2, 3, and 5. Grow Lancer 4 was on the PSP. And Grow Lancer 2 and 3 were on Grow Lancer Generations, released in North America. Fantastic games, man. I, I've covered these games a million times, no more reason to keep talking about them. Grow Lancer 2, brutally hard, very short. You can beat this game in like 20 hours, but it's just so goddamn hard. I'm gonna give it a B. Grow Lancer 3, it's better. The only, my only gripe with it is that. It reduced the party, you now have only 4 party members per battle, whereas in Grow Lancer 2 you have the whole 8 party members uh, party. So Grow Lancer 3 still has a better story, better gameplay, better everything, and so I'm, I'm gonna give it an A. And Grow Lancer 5 is a masterpiece, I'm gonna give it an S, I love this game to death. Moving on to the Dot .hack series, uh, 4 games, I'm gonna rank them all together, cause it's just one game cut into 4 parts. It's great, I'm gonna give it a B. But Dot Hack GU, man, the trilogy, I love it to death. It's an S. Yes, there is an Inuyasha game, turn based RPG on the PlayStation 2, and I couldn't care less about it, so I'm gonna give it a C. Jade Cocoon 2 is the sequel to Jade Cocoon on the PlayStation. Um, I don't know, guys. I think it's still a, get a good game, playable, enjoyable. It's, it's just. It's still about, you know, training monsters, capturing them and, you know, having them fight alongside of you. I think it has a better battle system than the first game, but overall it's just okay, not for me, not my type of game. Is it a hidden gem? I think it is. I think it's a decent game. It's just not my type of game, so I'm gonna give it a C. Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. I couldn't care less about the first Kingdom Hearts. I think it has some questionable bad design. I'm gonna give it a C. I know it's a classic for all of you, but not for me. The second one is a much better game, in my opinion. I really enjoy this game, I beat it, but still, I'm gonna give it a B. Chain of Memories is an enhanced port of uh, the one in the Game Boy Advance, and I think this version is better. I played both, and I did have some fun in this version, but it's still a Kingdom Hearts game, and nah, C. Kingsfield 4 is one of the worst RPGs on the PlayStation 2. It's disrespectful, it's an insult to the first two King's Field games on the PlayStation. I'm not a fan of those games, but they were good. And this one is just bad. It's not absolutely terrible, but it's bad. It's just... Don't play this game. And forget about it. Kill the series. Lapuzel Tactics is in the vein of the Disgaea universe. It's a very fun game, strategy RPG. I know the battle system is kind of hard to get into because it's different from the Disgaea series. It revolves around these little things on the board, on the maps, that influence, you know, just like the Geo system in the Disgaea games, it's very similar, but in, in this game I feel it was a little bit poorly executed sometimes, but other than that, it's a great game, very fun, totally hidden gem, and of course I think it's an underrated game because the story and the characters are so damn funny, man. I'm gonna give this game a B. 
Legaya 2 uh, Dual Saga. Uh, some of you think it's a great game. I think it's a bad game. Not that bad, but it's bad. It turned me off. It was just not as fun as the, as the first Legend of Legaya. It's just not Legend of Legaya. Let's leave it at that. It's, it's, uh, I don't even want to talk about it because I played this game a long time ago and maybe I should give it another chance. Maybe I'll change my mind, but as of the making of this video, I'm gonna give it a D. Magic Pendul is actually the prequel to Graffiti Kingdom and it came out before and it's a turn-based RPG and sometimes you, you create these characters, these kind of monsters to fight in this tournament. It's a weird-ass game, another game uh, oriented for kids, but I think Graffiti Kingdom is much better. Here, it, I don't know, man, it's just weird in the wrong sense of the word. And I wouldn't let my kids play this game, man, so I'm gonna give it a D. Makai Kingdom is another game, I couldn't get into it, it's also this guy I like. But it's mostly quest driven, it's mostly about the characters, uh, the job characters, the class characters, not the actual main characters. And something about this game turned me off, I don't know why, maybe I should give it another chance, but... I don't know man, it's Makai Kingdom, it's a good game, but I'm gonna give it a D, because it, I just didn't like it. Manakimia 1 and 2, amazing games, both of them, specifically the second one. Uh, the second one has two points of view, uh, you play one character and that character, is his missions, his entire adventure is different from the other one, sometimes they merge together, they meet along the way, and it's just a very good game, and the first one is also on the PSP, but I play the PS2 version, and I never finished it because I got stuck in this uh, crazy ass difficult boss, lots of difficulty spikes here, if you don't understand the alchemy and the synthesis mechanics in this game, you're totally screwed, these are actually main Atelier games, but some people treat them as spin-offs because they don't have the Atelier game in the title. Overall, I'm gonna give the first one a B, because it's such a fantastic game, but it could have been better in terms of design and difficulty, and the second one is almost a masterpiece. Very fun, totally recommended, A tier for me. Alright, we're halfway through and we're gonna keep going with Mega Man X Command Mission, also on the GameCube. It's a very good game, as a matter of fact, a lot of people trash this game because they're hardcore Mega Man fans. But if you're a fan of RPGs, turn-based RPGs, and if you kinda like Mega Man, this is a game for you, it's, it's good. I mean, the story, it's not that great, let's leave it at that, but the battle system is fun. Main turn-based RPG, exploration, dungeon crawler, uh, gra graphics are great, music is alright, overall it's a, it's a good game. So, I'm gonna give it a C. Yeah. <laughs> Metal Saga, Metal Saga is, uh, well, I, I'll need an entire video to talk about this series and this saga, but specifically, it's an open world, turn-based RPG. You play as this guy who wants to be a mechanic, this little kid who wants to grow up and be a mechanic, so he's gonna train and explore the world so he can become a full-fledged professional and all that jazz. But honestly, I didn't really enjoy this game because it's very cryptic. Without a guide, I don't think you'll make it very far in this game. The battle system is alright, you can play as the characters or as their tanks, you can get inside the tanks and fight in the tanks. And overall, it's, it's, a, it's an okay game, it's good, it just didn't do a lot for me. And maybe, maybe someday I'll download it and show it to you guys. I'm gonna give it a C for now. Maybe I'll change my mind later. <laughs> maybe, like sometimes I do. Come on! Alright, Master Hunter! Woo! Monster Hunter, man! <laughs> D. MS Saga is another hidden gem on the PlayStation 2, one among many, and it's a great game. It starts off a little bit slow, uh, the story is very dark, it's about uh, this orphanage burning down and destroyed by a mech, and the main character, a surviving orphan, just swears on revenge, on taking revenge against these mechs, these guys, this empire that destroyed his home and his friends and killed his friends and family. So, it's a very good story, it keeps you entertained, it hooks you up, and the battle system is kind of average, it doesn't th stand out, but overall you get to like it because it's balanced. But eventually the game starts getting really hard and you gotta grind and all that jazz. So MS Saga, I think it's a great game, but it, I just wasn't the biggest fan of it, even though the graphics look amazing, I gotta admit. And it's such a game with a strong personality, but other than that, man... Didn't do a lot for me, I can't decide if it's a C or a B, but it's not as great as, I don't know, the Girl, Lan Girl Lancer 2 or Dot Hack or Kingdom Hearts 2 even, so I'm gonna give it a C. 
Nightmare of Druaga is a roguelike RPG and it's very mediocre. This game, it looks fantastic. This, it looks interesting. I mean, the gameplay you're seeing right now and the graphics, it looks like it actually is a fun game, but it's it's not. It's just not a fun game. It's a roguelike RPG. Roguelike games are very niche, you know, exclusive to just a very small amount of people. That's why they don't make them that, that often. And Nightmare of Draga is just... it didn't do anything for me at all. To me, it's a mediocre game. I'm gonna give it a D. Odin's Fear, a masterpiece, but because Leaf first year, the, the remaster exists, Damn it, I don't care, I'm gonna give it an S, even though it's brutally hard and full of problems. It's an S, I love this game. Okage Shadow King is another hidden gem, uh, a little bit underrated, it's just very weird, the art style is weird as hell, but in the good sense of the word, I really like the, the, the art style here, very unique, there's nothing like that. Turn-based RPG, uh, it's very traditional style, it's just, you play this game for the story because it's such a laughing stock. You'll be like, it's just so weird and so laughable, it's so stupid in the good sense of the word. That's reason alone to play this game. Uh, it isn't great, because, you know, it grows old after a while, but Okage, I think it's a fun game. I'll give it a C. Orphan Sign of Sorcery, I think it's based on an anime, or the anime is based on a game. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's a mediocre game. Launch title on the PlayStation 2. It tried to be different, try to be experiment, experimental, uh, mixed some uh, real-time battle mechanics were turn-based and it's very weird it's just I don't know man it isn't that bad but it's just something that I just don't recommend Orphan Sign of Sorcery is just a mediocre game so I'm gonna give it a D Persona 3 I love it to pieces the FES version is the best version to play in my opinion masterpiece S tier for me and Persona 4 I love this game really had a lot of fun with it it's just in terms of story just in terms of story and music it wasn't as great as Persona 3, but it's still a fantastic game, and so I'm gonna give it an A. A solid A. Fantasy Story Universe 1 and 2, the second one is a direct sequel of the other one. A lot of people thought these games were online only, but no. They also had an offline full story mode. Very good, very underrated games as a matter of fact. They aren't fantastic, alright, but they're fun action RPGs. Long, I think the second one is better, but you can't go wrong with either. I'm gonna give both of them a B tier. Phantom Brave is a strategy RPG in the vein of the Disgaea series, but it's weird. In this game, you kind of need to attach the characters to objects, and the objects have different status. So depending on the character, depending on their job, and depending on the object, uh, you get a much better performance in battle. It really takes a while to get into that, and I gotta admit, this is the vanilla version, and the Wii and PSP versions fixed some small problems, so honestly, there's just no reason to play this PlayStation 2 version. It's not a bad game, it's a good game as a matter of fact, but this PlayStation 2 version is not the one to go anymore, I'm gonna give it a C. Radiator Stories, I love this game to pieces, covered this game a million times, extremely underrated action RPG a la Suica then, because you recruit a lot of characters and all that jazz, an A tier. Rogue Galaxy is another fantastic game. One day I can decide if it's just great, and the next day I can decide if it's just a masterpiece. Damn it, I'm gonna give it a B. It's a great game, it's just, it just annoyed me in some areas. Romancing Saga Minstrel Song is the remake, a full, amazing remake, visually stunning remake of the original Romancing Saga we never got. This one we did get it, fortunately. Hidden gem, several characters to choose from, eight characters as a matter of fact, each one with their own personality and story mode. Eventually some of these characters join up together. If you play one character, you're gonna encounter eventually some of the other main characters who will join your party, and it's quest driven. And I, I gotta give you a warning guys, it's a saga game. You will most likely play this game with a walkthrough. I couldn't beat this game without a guide because it's so goddamn cryptic. I didn't know what to do or where to go most of the time. So be warned, play, if you're gonna play this game, play with a guide. And with that in mind, it's a fantastic game, I'm gonna give it a B. Sakura Wars, I'm a huge die-hard fan of this game. Visual novel, I've talked about this game a million times, I'm gonna give it a straight A, man. Amazing game. Samurai Legend Musashi is the sequel to Brave Fencer Musashi, and it's not a bad game. It's actually kind of fun, but why play this game when you get all these other amazing games from the C tier and onward? 
to play. You know, it's just, I don't know, Brave Fencer Musashi had a lot of personality and a lot of charisma and it was a, it was, overall it was a good game. But this one is just like a watered down version of it. I don't know, when the story is very generic, gameplay is generic, everything is generic, it isn't bad. Controls are okay, camera is okay, gameplay is fine. It's just, this game is just kind of there. So I'm gonna give it a D. Yeah. Shadow Hearts 1, 2, and 3. Amazing games. I love these games to pieces. Almost a masterpiece each and every single one of them, but goddammit, just because I love them so much and because they're uh, one of a kind, very rare to see gothic RPGs, gothic team, gothic style RPGs. I think the very uh, the first two games are overly fantastic. The first one has the better story of the three because it's the darkest of the three, but the second one has the better gameplay. Uh, the first two games, damn it, I'm gonna give it an S because I love these games, man. But the third game, Shadow Hearts from the New World, the story is just not good. The gothic style is gone. Uh, the dark themes and all that just horror, slightly horror themes are kind of gone. Their story is still interesting, but the main character is a total joke. Uh, it felt like it was more about the comedy and the fan service than the actual story. But the gameplay is alright, so the puzzles here are so annoying. But the battle system is just as great. It's, it's just not as good as the other two games, so I'm gonna give it a B. Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner 1 and 2, Raido Kusunoka vs. The Zola's Army, and Raido Kusunoka vs. King Abaddon. Yeah, amazing action RPGs. You know these games already, very underrated. I think they're B tiers, they're great games, but they're very hard, grind fests, and they can be very repetitive sometimes. The same as Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2, grind fests, dungeon crawlers, extremely repetitive, but the story and the music in these games, absolutely amazing. I'm gonna give both Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2 games another B. Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, the one we all love and hate because it's so freaking hard, but has a lot of personality, great fantastic story, amazing graphics, amazing music, the best music in the entire Shin Megami Tensei series on the PlayStation 2, and the battle system is just amazing. It's just so freaking hard. That's the only reason preventing me from giving it an S. So I'm gonna give this game an, an A, a solid A. Shining Tears is a fun game, I've covered this game quite recently, several times. It's a short game, short adventure, you can beat this game in like 15 hours. Action RPG, several party members to follow you around, two-player co-op mode, very fun game. Uh, well, eventually it gets a little bit repetitive and boring, but overall you can just keep going back to it, and a lot of fun. Shining Tears, uh, I love the art style by the way, so... Uh, I'm gonna give it a B. Solid B. It's a good game. It's a hidden gem. Shining Force Neo. Uh, damn. No, it's not a good game, man. Uh, you know, they tried to turn the Shining series since the Game Boy Advance titles to action RPGs for whatever reason. Same developers were gone, Camelot Software Planning was gone, and with this game they messed up badly. I mean, the, the characters are complete and utter trash. One of the worst stories and cast of characters I've seen in a video game. Uh, the battle system is okay, I guess it's playable, but it gets very repetitive and unbalanced, very unbalanced, and it's just clunky controls. <sighs> Let's just leave it at that, okay? It's not a bad game, but it's not a good game either, so I'm gonna give it a D. Shining Force EXA, however, the sequel, not connected at all to Neo, story-wise, it's a much better game. It, again, just like Full Metal Alchemist 2, just like Kingdom Hearts 2, just like Dark Cloud 2, it did everything right, everything, but it's still a freaking grind fest, it's still brutally hard, brutally tiresome because it's a button masher and you get tired so, so often because the missions can be so goddamn long. It's just very hard, man. I can't rank this game higher than B. I want to give it a C, but uh, just because I love the music and the dual character protagonist, I'm gonna give it a B. <laughs> Soul Nomad is probably my favorite this Gaia type of game. It's uh, not exactly a spin-off, it's, it's just, it doesn't even take place in the same universe as this Gaia, it's just by the same developers. Strategy RPG, you control these groups of characters with different formations, which means each, each group of characters has a leader and then other characters attacking there. But you cannot control the battle system, I mean, you control the maps, you move around and all that jazz, you position your characters and you have them face face the, their enemies, but you cannot control what goes on during battle, so knowing what formations to use and how to use them, how to, you know, 
um, order your cactus around and all that jazz is the key to understanding this game. I had a lot of fun. It's fairly easy. It does get hard the more you progress and eventually it becomes a freaking grind fest like most of these Gaia-like games. But the story is amazing, the cactus are great, it's also a very good solid comedy and a very addictive battle system. Soul Nomad is a solid A for me, man. Star Rush until the end of time, you all know it, you all love it, I love it too. I just don't think it's that great, but Jesus, I'm gonna give it an A for now. I, like, I changed my mind a little bit about it, because I just remembered how great the story and the characters are in this game. Love it. Steambot Chronicles is a weird piece of a hidden gem. So much to explain, so much to talk about it. Several gameplay mechanics. Overall, it's an action RPG where you run around and move around and fight around inside of your mech. And several gameplay mechanics, like, you know, several mini games are there. Not open world, but kind of open city. Instead of open world, open city. Uh, it's a very fun game. It's a hidden gem. I'm gonna give it a C. It's just, let's just say it wasn't that fun for me. Stella Deus, another amazing game, strategy RPG, I'm a sucker for strategy RPGs and I'm a sucker for cell shaded graphics, great story, amazing cast of characters, this game is very hard, a freaking grind fest, but I did beat it after grinding like half of the game, 40 hours and 20 out of those 40 hours were just about grinding in this special dungeon, which you can access from the beginning of the game as a matter of fact, that's really cool. Because you start dying in this game right right about the second boss or so. So it's very hard. Uh, a lot of people pan this game because of the terrible voice acting and because it felt some kind of some somewhat generic as a matter of fact. I never felt it that way. I think it's criminally underrated, so I'm gonna give it a B. Alright, Suicoden than three, four, tactics and Suicoden than five. I love them all. I don't care about what you guys say about Suicoden than four. I love it to pieces as well. Suicoden than three, I'm gonna give it an A. Yes, sir. Suicoden than 4, I guess I'll give it a B, because it's still a great game, but not that great. Suicoden than Tactics is another B. Great strategy RPG, it starts off kind of slow, but you get used to it. And Suicoden than 5 is a masterpiece. S tier for me. Now, the Tales of Games, Tales of Legendia is another S tier. I love it to pieces, my favorite Tales of. Black Sheep of the Family, but you know me, I don't give a rat's ass about that. And Tales of the Abyss, it's also an amazing game. I'm gonna give it an A. I think Legendia is better, but that's just my extremely unpopular opinion. Tsugunai Atonement, very unique game, music by Yasunori Mitsuda, interesting story, you play as this guy who dies and then he turns into some kind of ghost and to make progress and get back to his body and something like that, you gotta possess people, you know, and help them in their quest to atone for a sin you committed. What sin is that? I'll leave it to your imagination. It's not dirty, but it's a turn-based RPG, you have no party members, you only fight with the character you're controlling or you're possessing, and that alone makes it very interesting. However, it's a quest-driven game, you gotta play the quest, you gotta move around, you gotta sometimes find out who to possess and how to possess that person, and that can take out a lot of time for you. It's a game that, like many of you will say, has no respect for your time, <laughs> but it's still a fun game, it's still a very original game. Hidden Gem, I'm gonna give it a C. Unlimited Saga, it's, it's not a bad game, it's not a bad game, but it's not great, it's just very convoluted and you lose interest in this game almost immediately because you don't know what to do, where to go, it's hard to understand how to play it, it takes a long ass time to properly understand how to properly play this game, Ugh, several characters there, several characters to choose from, to play as several stories, it's a saga game alright, but it's, it's kind of the worst saga game there is, but it's honestly not a bad game. However, I can't rank this game higher than a D, so yeah, D for me. Valkyrie Profile Silmeria, my favorite RPG on the PlayStation 2. Love this game to death. Virtua Quest is a spin-off of the Virtua Fighter games. That's right. Nobody ever wanted a spin-off of that series. Nobody gave a damn about it. Zero marketing was done. It's an action RPG. Uh, it feels more like an adventure type of game, uh, but there's a lot of strong RPG elements and all that jazz. It's, it's, not a, it's not a good game, man. It's not bad, but it's just mediocre in every sense of the word. Why make an action RPG spin-off based on the Virtual Quest series? I don't understand. D. Wild Arms 3, 4, 5, and Alter Code F. All four of them. 3 is fantastic, a B tier, it's an amazing game. Just has some outdated gameplay mechanics and clunky controls, but overall great. Wild Arms 4 is the black sheep of the family. I did finish this game and it's great too. Changed the battle system for the good in my opinion, but I'm gonna give it a C. 
Wildlands 5 is my favorite in the series. Very hard and unforgiving sometimes, but amazing story, characters and battle system, I'm gonna give it an A. And last but not least, the remake of Wild Arms, the first one. Good game, good remake, great, it's just everything. I do prefer this version over the original PlayStation, but that's just my opinion. It's a great game, I'm gonna give it a B. Wizardry... Oh man. <laughs> it's a freaking grind fest. it's a wizardry game. Extremely hard, probably one of the hardest RPGs on the PlayStation 2. I recommend this game for hardcore players who are into first-person dungeon crawlers. I really do, but honestly, it's... let's just say it's not for me. Not my type of game, even though I love the story, it was so damn interesting here in the art style as well. It's a very dark game, but it's just these types of gameplay mechanics. Dungeon crawlers in first person and brutally unbalanced, not for me. It's still a hidden gem, I'm gonna give it a C. Sino Saga 1, 2, and 3. I love them all. I don't care about what you guys say about the first, about the second game. Sino Saga 2, it's a bad game and blah blah blah, I don't give a shit. It's very hard. I'll probably never finish it, but it's still a great game. First game, I'm gonna give it a B. Second game, I'm gonna give it a B as well. But the third game did everything right. Perfected battle mechanics, story, characters. Masterpiece, man, a great conclusion. I'm gonna give it an S. East 6, The Ark of Napishtim. It's a fabulous game, but it's a very hard game, man. There's a cheat mode in there where you can just be over level and beat the crap out of the entire game if you want to. But if you want to choose like normal difficulty or hard or easy, there's nothing of the sort. So you're stuck with the normal mode, which is actually hard. It's a very hard game, but it's a fantastic game, amazing controls. Uh, there's also a PSP version, but I do recommend this one instead. Overall, you can't go wrong with either version. E6, The Ark of Napishtim, weird ass subtitle. It's still a great game, still a fun game, I'm gonna give it a B. And last but not least, the Yu-Gi-Oh games. I don't give a rat's ass about them, and honestly, even if I was a fan, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed them. They're not that good, in my opinion. They're fun games if you're a die-hard fan of strategy RPGs and of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. If you're not, forget about these games. They're not great. I'm gonna give them a D. Alright, people, that's it. Look at this amazing tier list. Look at this. Lots of S tiers and A tiers this time. Lots of B tiers as well. I love the PlayStation 2, man, it's my favorite system of all time. I love its catalog, its library, its JRPGs, even some of the C tiers. A lot of the C tier RPGs that I put here are very good games in my opinion. Some of them should have been B, maybe. But overall, you know, you can't go wrong with this system. Only one E tier, only one game that is actually absolute garbage. That speaks volumes. Great system. This is my ranking, long ass video, I know that, but it was fantastic, I had a lot of fun doing this guys, see you in 2021!